Okay, so this is the stage I've reached so far with my CPM um, single board computer. I've got my Z80 here. I've got my ROM here, which is used for booting up um, CPM. I've got RAM here, 64K of RAM, um, which is where all the programs uh, gets eventually loaded up into and run from. I've got um, a little bit of logic here to decode some of the control lines from the Z80. I've got an Arduino Nano here, which is effectively working as some um, virtualized peripherals. So the, um, <clears throat> the screen, the keyboard, and the disks are being all controlled by the Arduino. And the disks themselves are stored, so the A drive, B drive, etc. of the um, of uh, CPM are stored on this um, micro SD card here, which is in this micro SD card breakout board. So what happens is the, the Z80 obviously is running the programs um, that get booted up into it from SD card. So the program CPM itself is brought in from the SD card through the Arduino, through my rather nasty brown um, data bus here, uh, through the Z80 and stored in RAM, um, and then the programs get run from RAM. And I've had a lot of trouble with this project. It's given me quite a bit of grief. And I've come to the conclusion that it is just building it on um, solderless breadboard has been a bit of a mistake. And it's just, I think, too complex of a project. Given my solderless breadboarding skills to do this, I think I should have gone for some sort of proper strip board or PCB, which is where I'm going to take the project next. But to show you the progress I've made so far, I will um, boot it up into CPM and we can see what it does. Now, what's quite interesting about this um, is the clock speed. And this is where I found it's a bit of a problem. So I've got on my uh, voltmeter here, I've got uh, a frequency counter, which is currently registering 125 kilohertz. So at the bottom of the board, right down here, I've got a 16 megahertz uh, crystal oscillator. Well, it's a 16 megahertz crystal here, and um, some not gates in here to, to produce a crystal oscillator. Um, this red wire here is my frequency counter. So if we slap that in here somewhere, we should see that that is oscillating at 16 megahertz. There you go, 16 megahertz. And then I've got a couple of chips here, which are binary counters, which just divide the frequency down by two at each stage. So by the time, so what I've done is I've divided it down and down and down, 16 megahertz, eight megahertz, four, two megahertz, one megahertz, half a megahertz, and finally down to um, a quarter of a megahertz and then an eighth of a megahertz, so 125 kilohertz. And what I've found is it runs reasonably well at 125 kilohertz, but it runs worse and worse as the speed increases until eventually um, it doesn't run at all uh, at any kind of decent sort of speed. So what I'll do is I'll just um, start up CPM um, if I can find out how to do that. So what I'll do is I'll reboot my Arduino by pressing that. That will reboot the um, uh, that will reboot the Z80, boot up um, CPM into the RAM and start it running. And this is what we get. We get uh, Arduino IO helper for CPM is my message that's coming from my Arduino just to show that that's on. And then the rest of it is from CPM. Welcome to CPM 2.2. Copyright 1979 Digital Research and DIR. And that's my A drive, so we get the A, the friendly A prompt. And on my A drive, I've got stats.com and mbasic.com. In the lovely world of CPM, a .com file, uh, it doesn't actually show the dot, does it? But anyway, stat.com is what it means, and mbasic.com. A com file is a command file, which is actually a program. So if we type stat, uh, it will, stat is the bizarre name for the program that tells you how much disk space you've got. And you can see things are not running massively fast. Um, the red light flashes on the Arduino to show that we're connecting to the SD card and reading things in. 
um, and it claims to have 748k of space on drive A. We've got drive B as well. Um, and every time we, we go onto a new drive, it's what CPM calls a logging on to the drive. It has to have a quick look around the drive, which is why the uh, light flashes on the Arduino again. And then it decides we're on drive B. And I would think, ah, oh, now you can't type stat because you have to type A colon stat, I think, unless I've put, have I put stat on the B drive? Anyway, CPM, a little bit of a weird, very basic primitive operating system, but I've come to like it actually by doing this project. How are we getting on for drive space? A drive we already know about, 748k, B drive, ooh, 784k, so there's nothing on the B drive then, I think. Now, it's a pretty arbitrary number, 748k, because I've made these drives on an SD RAM card, and I could probably make them any size I want, but I just, uh, there's a lot of configurational parameters for making drives compatible with CPM, and I didn't really understand all the parameters, so I copied them from um, a TRS-80, TRS which is an ancient computer which apparently had some good capacity um, floppy disk drives on there. Uh, I just copied the parameters from there, and it claimed that they were um, 800k disks, so there you go, I stole those parameters. Now, here's, so we'll go back to the A drive, and I'll start up Microsoft Basic, in basic and this takes why is it doing that oh well I had a bit of a glitch there it crashed but um, let's try again um, by the way in the bottom along the bottom bar where it says control AZ for help that's all coming from minicom so it's nothing to do with CPM at all um, so yeah, on my disk now I've got stat, mbasic, and I've put another program on there called cal, which is a calendar program. Um, and if I just demonstrate by starting up the cal program, how slow it is, um, it's, it has to do a lot of disk activity to load the calendar program in, because it's loading in 128 byte segments, all one after another, at a very slow clock speed, which is why that little light is flashing like crazy. And when it does eventually load up the calendar program, even printing out to the screen is pretty slow. And I think this is a combination of, first of all, CPM not being the most efficient, um, oh, there it goes, the most efficient uh, operating system in the world because it's got a few different layers that it has to go through in order to print. But also just a dreadful 125 kilohertz clock speed is never going to be much fun. But anyway, there we go. There's calendar program, cal.com. It's up and running. It's telling me what I need to do. Um, it is promising that if I type in um, a uh, the name of a month and a year, it will show me the days of the month and year. So where are we then? We're in August 2018. So let's see if it's actually telling the truth. Calendar, August 2018. It claims that it works from 1804 up to the year 30,000. So it should be able to do this. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it's pretty slow. It's calculating. Okay, so here is the result of computing the days of the week for August 2018. Uh, so today is the 18th and it's a Saturday. So yeah, it's got it right. August the 18th, 2018. Definitely a Saturday. Here he is on the screen there. So that's interesting, but what I want to do is start up Microsoft Basic, which again takes an absolute age to load. So I might just stop the video for a second and save you the trouble of watching that. Yes, yeah, so I think I can increase this clock speed up to at least four megabytes. And I think, well, the Z80 should go up to 20 megabytes, but I can't really see that anything built on solderless breadboard is going to be stable at anything above about four megahertz. Did I just say megabytes? Megahertz. Um, because oh, there's just, well, solderless breadboard is rubbish. But um, currently I can't even get up to one megahertz. So there are a number of things that I think I've done wrong um, in here. And I'm just going to try and analyze the problem and fix them one at a time. But just to give you a demonstration of the problems, we've got Microsoft Basics. This is uh, 
Microsoft Basic 80, revision 5.21. Microsoft wrote a lot of basics for a lot of people, and this was their CPM version. So lists, do you remember basic, how it works? There's nothing in there. So 10 for A equals 0 to 100. 20, um, let C equal peak A. So we should loop through all the addresses from 0 to 100. Peak gets the character uh, a byte out of memory at that address. Print C uh, 40 next A. Check that's all right. List slow, just a list. That's oh, not too bad. Run. Boom. So there we go. That is the memory that they're the data byte values from the first 100, or perhaps 101 memory locations. And it's well, it's doing it at a reasonable speed, isn't it? Isn't it? But it's not the fastest thing in the world. And that's at 125 kilohertz. What I want to do now is when I'll let that finish actually, just so I don't, um, so I get a fair comparison. And look, it ends with some spaces there because 32 is the ASCII character for space. So let's now change my clock frequency up to 250 kilohertz. List uh, run. So at 250 kilohertz, it should be running twice as fast, shouldn't it really? And that does seem to be faster. And it actually isn't doing too bad of a job of that, is it? Seems to be going quite well, and look, there's those spaces at the end. So that's 250 kilohertz. Um, let me see, where's 500 kilohertz going to be? Is it there? 500 kilohertz. So we're at half a meg now. List. Ooh, it's faster. Run. Oh, it's much faster. That's actually not terrible, is it? So there it goes. Now, if we jump here, we'll be at a megahertz. So all I'm doing is I'm moving from different places on the binary um, divider. So it divides the, um, the clock speed down. Each stage of a binary counter effectively divides the incoming clock pulse by two. So um, I'm putting in 16 megahertz. I'm dividing it through five different stages, I think, by this point. Is that right? Let's see. That's 16. First stage would be eight, second stage would be four, next stage would be two, next stage, oh no, four stages. I'm going through four stages of my binary division to get down to one megahertz. List, oh, much faster. Ah, so you put an extra space in there, run. You put in, ooh, yeah. So I'm starting to get some strange results. Um, funny things being printed. I think characters being missed, characters being slightly indented wrongly, additional things being thrown in. Let's run that again. So that's 29, 101, 0, and then some 32s. 29, 101, 0, and then some 32. Ooh. 29, 101, 0, and then some 32s. Yes, yeah, so it's throwing in some strange extra spacing and bits and pieces like that. And there was even a funny message in there somewhere, which has actually been put in by my Arduino. When it, yeah, going into unknown mode, question mark. So what the Arduino has got various different modes that I've set it, and the um, Z80 can talk to it in, in these different modes. And one of the modes is to write a character to the screen. One of the modes is to read a character from the screen. And at that point there, it asked for a mode the Arduino had not heard of, so I guess it's some corrupt data. Um, but it is still working. Oh, that's at one megahertz. Now let me see if I can find two megahertz. I think it's going to be one of these outputs here. Not that one. Um, so if I plug it into this, um, yeah, that's one megahertz there. And this one is two megahertz. So I'm now trying to run it at two megahertz. So it's still running. Oh, it's very fast. But not too bad, actually. Two megahertz. Hmm, it's actually working quite well. Let me just see if I can find, what would be the next one? Four megahertz. Four megahertz. Let's try running it at four megahertz. Whoa. No. 
that's not working. Two megahertz. No, I've completely crashed it now. I have to reboot. Now I've also found that it never boots up at two megahertz. Um, so we'll go right back down to one. It seems to only really boot satisfactorily at very, very slow clock speeds. And I think really there are some problems in the speed. Well, I, I would guess there's problems in the board in general, in the um, solderless breadboard. I just think that solderless breadboard at fast clock speeds, megahertz clock speeds, you're gonna get stray capacitance. I've got my phone near this thing. I've got my um, multimeter near this thing. I've got an Arduino messing with my stuff. I've got an SD card reader. I've got stupid wiring that's all over the place. These ridiculous wires here. I don't know what made me use wires that long. I didn't need to do that. So I've just done stupid things. Um, these uselessly cheap decoupling capacitors that I've got. Look at this. Terrible, terrible. It's so cheap. They're just not good at all. Um, so it's not really... Um, ever going to be much of a goer as I've got it at high clock speed anyway but I think it should be able to run at 2 megahertz on here but I also think that at, at fast speed the Z80 is talking to the Arduino faster than the Arduino can answer and that is causing problems as well and I want to look into that and see if I can come up with a solution whereby the Z80 can talk to the Arduino the Arduino can say to the Z80 just hold on and wait till I'm finished the Arduino can then answer the question that the Z80 has asked and then get back to it with the information it's after and then tell it to stop waiting. So I'm going to see if I can come up with a, a solution to that and um, hopefully that will improve the problem.